to the tutorial for how to use the all new Brewers Worksheet version 2. As you can see, we've made a lot of changes to the interface. It's a lot cleaner and there's a lot less clutter for in entering information. And we've streamlined this, uh, the worksheet to actually match your process better from start to finish. So let's take a look at a few things that you need to do before starting to work with the worksheet. Of course, it goes without saying that you need to go to File, Make a Copy, in order to make copy a working copy of the master spreadsheet. All right, so you're going to copy this off to your Google Drive, and you'll name it, and then um, it'll save it off to your Google Drive. That will be your local master. Your local master, you will make copies of, or you can make copies directly from this master spreadsheet uh, to build your recipes in and track your brew day. Now it goes without saying that it's one worksheet per recipe and brew day. So if you have the same recipe but you're going to brew it four different times, you're going to need four different um, worksheets to track each and every brew day. Okay, first things first, we need to go to preferences. In the preferences tab is where we're going to set uh, some values that will help determine our level of efficiency and water levels and such. So first of all, we'll set our water to grain ratio. This is a commercial uh, formula that we use. It's pounds of water to pounds of grain. Typically, home brewers will use quarts of water per pound of grain, but we're using uh, the commercial grade setting of three to one as a typical average ratio. And below it, you'll see at the 1.4 here is the auto calculation of a ratio of three to one. We can make this uh, mash thicker if we want to by lowering it. We can go to say 2.5 and that'll lower to 1.2 quarts per water per pound of grain. Or we can raise it up to say 3.5 and have a really liquidy mash. But this is, we're going to just start with the default of 3, 3 to 1. Below that, we can set our efficiency for our system. Typically, my brew days are about 80% efficient uh, in terms of extract efficiency. Uh, you'll want to adjust this for uh, what your level of efficiency is. If you're unsure, start at 70% and then work your way from there. Uh, your actual efficiency will vary from person to person or recipe to recipe, but over time you'll eventually figure out what your efficiency is. I've also got values for system loss. They're based also based on commercial measurements where you measure in terms of percentage loss. Now, you can, as you actually get your recipe in, uh, entered in, you can actually go back and fine tune this. You'll see that it'll eventually auto calculate for liters, balance, barrels, and gallons, and you'll be able to see what that percentage value will equate to in terms of losses. And then lastly, we're going to set our system size, which is basically our mash ton capacity. Uh, the liters, gallons, or barrels. And please only set one of these. So if you like liters, go ahead and put your liter capacity. If you like gallons, go ahead and do that. Or if you're on a commercial scale, go ahead and put the barrel capacity of your mash ton. This is, of course, uh, the capacity minus the dead space underneath your false bottom. Okay, so now that we've got our basic preferences set, we're going to go over to the summary tab and go through all the different tabs in terms of what they, their function is. The summary tab is a quick summary of the recipe with all the fermentables, boil hops, other additions, along with the time, volume, and all that. Water is where we're going to actually get water calculations for mash and sparge volumes, along with um, entering in our strike temperature. The mash tab has um, all sorts of information for selecting mash profile, the temperature rests, and also for tracking our vorloffing and sparging and wort collection. We've got a boil tab for tracking all of the additions that we put into, um, into the boil and then tracking post-boil volumes and whirlpool and chilling and then on to fermentation. We've also got other tabs including uh, for tracking competitions that you enter your beer into. There's uh, globals for setting various um, things you can 
If you're at a higher elevation, you might want to tweak your evaporation rate or your shrinkage rate, but generally speaking, uh, most of these values you shouldn't have to touch. And then towards the end, we've got an About tab for uh, tracking revision history of the spreadsheet itself, and then a Help tab that has some basic frequently asked questions on how to use the spreadsheet itself. All right, let's go back to the Summary tab. We're going to enter in a really quick and easy recipe. Um, it's my English bitter, and it uh, I really like this beer a lot, and so you, you're free to brew this if you want. So we're going to put in March 5th, and then we're going to set bitter, standard ordinary bitter. And that will populate those fields with some BJCP values, which gives me a range of gravity, uh, alcohol, bitterness, and color. So what makes this spreadsheet different from all the other applications? All the other applications are ask, basically asking you to fill in specific weight values for your fermentables and for your hops. This takes a completely different approach where we can enter in percentages and IBU targets in order to make our recipe scalable and flexible so that we can take the same recipe, we can make a one pound ver or one gallon version of it, we can make it five or ten gallons, or even scale it up on a commercial level to go say ten barrels or whatever. So we're going to enter in our final target volume. I'm going to enter in 19 uh, liters, which is approximately five gallons or 0.16 barrels. I'm going to set in a boil time of 60 minutes uh, with a target gravity of 1041. Now, why am I entering a target value or original gravity value when basically all the other applications out there set that for me? Well, I want to set the target uh, uh, potential fermentability of my wort. I want to say what that original gravity level is. And what that's going to do is it's going to help me scale my recipe appropriately to meet that target. As you can see here, it's already filled in that it, I'm going to require nine point. It's going to require 9.1 pounds of grist in order to achieve this target original gravity. All right, let's uh, select London Ale yeast. You can do whatever you want, and here it shows me my attenuation uh, potentials. And once I get my fermentables in, all these values up here, pre-boil, final gravity, all that stuff will start filling in eventually. Okay? So let's get all this stuff in here. We've got Golden Promise. We've got Baird's, Karastan, some corn sugar, and chocolate malt, 350. And instead of entering in weight values, we're going to enter in grist percentages. So I know I need 86% Golden Promise, 6% Baird's, 6% corn sugar, and 2% chocolate malt. You'll notice here down at the bottom, I'm going to actually delete that too, and show you down here at the bottom how this box is red. This indicates that my column here, my percentage column, does not add up to 100%. We need this value to be um, end up at a full 100%. All these values now will give me the weight of grist that I need. So I know that I need 7.8 pounds of Golden Promise, 0.5 pounds of Baird's Kerstan and corn sugar, and 0.2 pounds of chocolate malt. And that fills in all my values here in terms of what my pre-boil gravity can, I can expect it to be uh, what my target final gravity is going to be approximately, depending upon yeast attenuation, alcohol levels, color, all that. All right, before I move on to hops, I'm going to switch over to the mash first. And I'm going to set what my mash profile is. I know that I'm going to have a medium bodied beer, or I want a medium bodied beer, so I'm going to select that from the mash profile. I see that my first rest is going to be about 66 C, so I'll switch over to water, enter that into my target mash temperature of 66 C. And that, based upon what my malt temperature is, 
right here and degrees of temperature loss I'm going to probably lose about 3C in temperature or 5 degrees Fahrenheit. I know that I'm going to need 74.8C for strike temperature or 166.6. Also over to the right here you notice we have a new feature it's called mash ton capacity. This helps me approximate how much volume the grist and the uh, mash uh, strike water is going to take up in my mash tun. So it was, it was a nice little guide to help approximate um, just how full my mash tun is going to be and will help you kind of dial in to just how much grist you can uh, squeeze into that mash tun. Again, but these values are just approximate intended to only be a relative guide. So let's go back to the summary tab and we're going to start filling in hop values. So we've only got one and that's East Ken Golings and they're going to go in at uh, let's see what did I set the 60 minute mark. Okay. Now instead of entering in the ounces or the grams that I want for my hops I want to ask myself, okay, what IBU level do I want these hops to contribute? So my target IBU range is 30, and that will keep me within the BGCP guidelines. You'll notice that it then fills in how many ounces of this hop I'm going to need. Now, for some reason, my actual packaged hops vary from the value populated here. Let's say my pack, the package of hops that I have is actually 6.5% alpha acid. I can just change that right ahead. But for now, I'm just going to leave this to 5%. And this will auto calculate uh, my values. Now, why is it, why are we setting a target IBU? Because every year, from crop to crop, from year to year, the actual percentage of alpha acids is likely to vary um, in the different uh, hop offerings. So, uh, East Kent Goldlings might be 5% one year, but they might be 6.8% the next year, or they might be 4% the, uh, the following year. We can't always count on the same percentage of alpha acids. So what is our uh, core thing that we can cling to? And that is the target IDUs that we want out of that hop. All right. Now, what do we do about flavor and aroma hops? I don't have any in this particular batch, but just for the sake of argument, I'm going to set one for the 30 minute and then we'll do one at uh, flame out. Uh, we'll just say five minutes. As a general rule of thumb you're going to get half the IBUs out of 30 minute editions so um, I could conceivably say alright maybe I only want 15 IBUs out of this and then ones near flame out around five are going to be significantly less. They might be three times as less. So I might get only five IBUs. I mean, this obviously depends upon the hop variety and what your recipe dictates. So you'll want to play around with your target IBUs down in the flavor and aroma ranges. But as a rule of thumb though, this will scale infinitely. So let's say I want to change this 19 Let's say I want to go 190 liters, which is approximately a barrel and a half for a commercial scale. You'll notice this now gives me a significantly different uh, weight in hops as well as in grist. So I know that to produce this beer on a 1.5 barrel scale, I know I'm going to need about 91 pounds of grist and about... Uh, seven, almost 18 ounces of these can go links. But we're going to go back down to 19, down to earth. And then we've also got spaces for other boil additions like spices, yeast nutrient, whirlpool and dry hopping. Now a note about these two regions here. Um, presently these do not scale and we're still doing research on ways that we can take non-standard additions, things that don't scale to original gravity settings or target IBUs, and find some way to have a ratio. Uh, maybe it's 
ounces to or grams to liters or something uh, weight based or weight to volume ratio or something um, but for now this is you're going to have to freeform enter this as you normally would and then make assumptions based upon any scaling that you do all right let's switch back over to the wire tab now that we've got all our values populated we know how much sparge and mash uh, strike water we're going to need for mashing we switch over to the mash tab we also have our schedule populated here during the actual um, uh, mashing I can actually track so let's say my sac rest was actually 65 C I mashed for a full uh, let's see I had maybe I had a longer mash schedule I note that here at a pH level and I can take notes uh, great mash awesome beer and then track things as we go so that I've got detailed notes about my brewing session Likewise, we've added in for additional note-taking purposes. Um, you can track how long our Vorloffing session is, which is the process of recirculating wort over the mash. And maybe we can say that, yeah, we Vorloffed and it was about, it reduced the temperature down, we were about 62 C. But when we started sparging, we sparged for about 15 minutes and that brought it back up to 66 C. So we can track those things. It's more information that we can track and have in our hands understand the different uh, way things play in. All right, so now if I look into some old data that I've got from previous brew session, I can imagine, all right, maybe my pre-boil gravity as I'm finished collecting was 8.4 bricks. That puts me at about 1035 for a specific gravity. And let's say my pre-boil volume was 28 liters, approximately 7.4 gallons. It shows me that um, I came in under my target pre-boil gravity by four points and only had a mash efficiency of 74%. So with all this data that I've collected, maybe next time I can go back and say, well, what do I need to do differently? Maybe I need to mash longer or maybe I need to make some uh, different changes otherwise. And then there's a space below here for uh, jotting down more thorough notes about your mash schedule. All right. So now that we've got our wort collected and we're ready for boiling, um, because I have relatively simple additions, uh, my hops show up here to remind me that I've got an addition at 60 minutes, and it's 1 point ounces or 50.6 grams. I could also do something along this lines. I could say uh, yeast nutrient, and we're going to say the last 15 minutes. And, uh, and we're just going to say um, 20 out. And then we'll go back to the boil. And that information will be populated here to remind me about yeast nutrient at those times. All right. I also have a spot here for jotting down notes. So like if I had a boil over or I had to add more hops or something, I can throw all those notes here. All right. Right here, I've got a spot to enter my post-boil volume so I can say that in my post boil volume was 27 liters and volume to fermenter was 26 we'll just say all right I can track the duration of my whirlpool I can say I whirlpooled for 15 minutes and it was about maybe 100 degree 180 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and chilling duration was only 10 minutes and I can say that I got it chilled down to 65 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Then from that, after we've chilled, we take our gravity reading. And let's say it was 11 bricks. So we came in at 1046. And our pitching temperature was 65 degrees. Make sure you enter all that information because then it populates the first line in our initial reading for our fermentation record in the fermentation tab. So you can see up here that we've got our yeast temperature range, the first date, the bricks reading temperature, and then both the Play-Doh and specific gravity levels. So as each day progresses, um, we can track our fermentation record and say, all right, the following day it jumped down to eight bricks because it was aggressive. 
and then maybe the following day it went to uh, seven and so on and so forth so maybe it went all the way down to you know three three bricks so we can take this final gravity then 1.008 enter that in and we know that we've now got an alcohol by volume of five percent approximately 163 calories and we had 82 percent attenuation I can also jot additional fermentation notes here if I've got them and then if I enter the beer in competitions I can make notes of the event name location date the score BJCP scores I got and additional comments and notes so that's the spreadsheet in a nutshell and I hope that uh, you enjoy using it. If you have questions or features that you want to see included in here, or uh, maybe some bugs that you might have found along the way, or adjustments that you think should be made to formulas, just let me know. And I would be more than happy to accommodate them. Thank you so much, and good luck, and happy brewing.